Hello everyone, it's the Farm Sim Guy here and I just wanted to give you a quick message from today's sponsor, Flexispot. Now, one of the challenges of being a content creator is the number of hours you end up sitting at your desk. So, the solution has to be one that works for you. Now, I find after a full day of work, I regularly jump straight into creating content for my channel and that can take its toll. But thanks to Flexispot and their fantastic E7 standing desk, I can now enjoy the variety of gaming while sitting down, but when it comes to pulling my content together, I can switch to standing and give my body a break from being in the same position constantly for hours on end. The E7 Desk Pro Series comes with a dual motor lifting system, anti-collision system, it can take up to 125 kilograms in weight and has a range of 58 to 123 centimeters in adjustment. You also have a choice of three different frame colors as well as seven different desktop options and these come in a range of different sizes as well. The premium keypad also allows for four pre-programmed settings as well as manual adjustment and also has a handy USB plug for charging your devices. I'm going to leave a link to the E7 desk in the description below, but be sure to check out their website for other desks in their range too. And even better, from the 23rd to the 31st of May, you can get up to 38% off a new desk and they ship globally. So there's all the information you need. I have had this desk from Flexispot for the last month and I have to say it's completely revolutionized the way I pull my content together. I think I find myself standing now as much as I do sitting down and I really notice the benefit. So if you are currently in the process of thinking about getting a new desk, now could be the perfect time with the sale on to check out the range from Flexispot. So without further ado, let's get back to the content. Hello everybody, it's Farm Sim Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. We are here today to look at Nitro Dad's first map for FS22, Middleburg or Middleborough or Middlebro, depending on where you come from. But it's a fantastic map um, up there with the quality that we always expect from Nitro Dad. Um, so I thought we'd just jump straight in and have a quick look at it. Now he has given us a little intro paragraph that comes with the map file. So I'm going to read that to you first before we head on around the map and take a look at it. It is a four times map, so it's quite a large map. Um, so there's a quite a lot to cover because the detail and the extras that he's included in this are absolutely fantastic. So here we go. Hello friends. So much has happened since we last met. I know I promised our next adventure would be a bit farther south, but I came across a real gem for you to explore. Located deep in the Catskill Mountains of New York State, the area around Middleborough is an amazing sight to see. While farming is still a major way of life here, industry and retail development have made their way here as well. With curvy country roads, deep ravines, waterfalls and fields carved from the earth itself, Middlesbrough takes you back in its pioneer routes dating back to the early 1700s. Located along Scenic Route 30, also called the Adirondack Trail, it's a road trip worth taking for sure. Local attractions include Minekill Falls and Vrooman's Nose, a popular hiking trail to the top of the granite mountain overlooking the valley. To start you off, I've purchased a few acres and a place for you to sleep. I've also gathered a few pieces of equipment from local farmers you will need right away. I already planted a crop in your field for you to really shine with. Local farmers have lots of work available as well for you to make extra money. A special trailer has been included to transport lime water if you choose to make sugar. Other included mods are needed for your starting fleet. Harvests upon the valley. Are you up for the challenge? So again, I think um, it's really nice that modders and mappers are thinking about the story behind their maps. We've seen it a couple of times recently. But that's a great little backstory to start the game off with here. Uh, and it really, this map really opens itself up to, you know, really getting lost in your imagination and... and using the map as a basis for where your ideas could go so this is the start point you start on this i guess uh, down by the river there um and you've got this little car park here 
there's a sign here that says a public fishing stream um, and again this kind of gives you a little bit of a clue as to how he's built in so much extra stuff into the map um, so when you spawn a new farmer mode you get given this but we ain't going to use that we're going to go for something a little bit more appropriate and we're going to jump in the old Chevy let's just jump into the map to show you where we're starting as well and give you an idea for the map so there we go and again uh, very reminiscent of uh, Nitro Dad's maps from FS19. He does a great job with the PDAs. So you can see he's identified the different types of road there, as you can see, and we've got a nice key to the side. He's also marked out some of the key points, so where the farms are and where all the main productions are. So as you can see, five farms on the map. Farm one, two, three, four, and then five up in the top corner there. So we'll go and check out all of those. Number one is the start farm if you're in new farmer mode. So we'll go and have a look at that first. Uh, but we'll maybe stop along the way uh, and see if there's anything interesting that we can look at. Um, we're starting right down in the bottom corner here. Um, so there's our start point. So we've got a little bit of a drive up to here. Uh, we've got a manure buy point here and the animal dealer on the way. So we'll have a look at that uh, and then we'll head up. Uh, probably we will stop at fa uh, farm two on the way past, uh, but we'll definitely uh, spend a little bit of time up on farm one because there's a couple of nice little touches there, which uh, which I'd like you to see. Now, like I said, it is a 4x map, so it is a big map, so lots of capacity here. It could work well as a multiplayer map with the five farms. Um, the fields aren't huge, although there is some bigger stuff, which we'll show you later on. But I think it's really designed for small to medium-sized machinery, and you'll get an idea for that when we see the first farm. But there we go. Welcome to Middleburg, or Middleborough. Um, let's head up here. Again, you can start to see the size of some of these fields but you can also see the detail he's gone to the amount of effort that he puts into his maps is phenomenal and i will say because of that um it can be quite heavy on frame rate um you might need to tweak your settings appropriately to make sure that it uh, runs smoothly i'm running a, an rtx 3070 uh, uh, and it's running very smoothly uh, up at 60 frames a second most of the time so uh, nothing too concerning there but here we are, we're at the livestock auction here. Some nice touches in this. Um, let's just walk around the back here. There's your manure buy point there. But actually having the animals in the field, hanging out behind uh, the livestock area is really... Oh, we've got a rogue cow, an escapee there. But yes, if we just jump the fence here, as you can see, you can hear them selling in the background. And there's the pigs and all the pens here. But I like this as well, that you've not just got cows, you've got sheep, and you've got pigs in there as well. And they're all roaming free. All of the animal lots on this map are custom, which again, I, something I'm big on, and I've talked about before about other maps. Um, the square pens that you just plonk into the middle of a field don't feel very realistic to me, so I love it when mappers add them in. Uh, and build them to the shape of the land and around the uh, around the contours of the land um, as they've uh, set the map up. So really nice to see that. So there's your animal dealer. We'll head on a little bit further and we'll start to have a look at some farms. Just past the animal dealer, we are at the sawmill here. So you can see lovely big turning area here to turn around in, drop your wood off. And one of the outputs from here now is dog houses. So uh, you'll see that on your uh, you'll see that on your cell points later on. Right, let's head on a bit further again. We'll head up to farm number two. Just as we're on our way as well, as you can see, again another signature Nitrodad uh, thing is to put houses and uh, just areas where people live. It makes the map feel lived in. It's not just empty fields and uh, farms plonked. There's actual life here, which is great. Just crossing the river here, we've got a lovely uh, river there, a little stream turning into a river, I guess. Waterfalls as well. Always nice to see flowing water on maps. A little advert here, rotating barrel. Now, what is this for? Um, we do have whiskey and beer production on the map, and I'm guessing... There we go, double barrel aged whiskey. 
So we'll go and check out the whiskey distillery later on as well. Again, heading up here, we've got some more buildings. Um, you could potentially purchase this if you wanted to. It's not marked as a farm on the map. But if you so wished, there is another area there that you could purchase if you so wish. It's just jumping into the map here. I'll show you. It's showing up as there on the map. Um, so you could purchase, actually split across two blocks there, but you could easily purchase that. And actually, it's a good point to show you the um, how the how the map is split up. So again, you can purchase big swathes of just forests should you wish to do that. Um, but all the fields down here are split up relatively individually. There's a couple of the smaller ones that are joined together. For example, with farm two, you get two small fields there. Um, but in principle, and again with farm one, you get a couple there if you're uh, if you're not in new farmer mode. But in principle, most of the fields are split up as individual fields, so you can purchase. And prices are sensible too. Um, no crazy, crazy prices in there. Um, obviously the farm, 1.3 million there, but uh, some of these smaller fields here, they go 214,000. 720 there, there's a lot of a wood, woodland area there as well. Um, 45 down like 151 there, they field 19 there, 146. And there is farm five, which is a block as well, one and a half million. So lots of variant in the uh, in the prices, but lots of flexibility as well. And here we are rolling up on what is marked on the map as farm two. But we'll uh, drop in here now and have a look on our way to the starter farm. So there we go, we had to open the gates, which is again a nice little touch. So calves there. Um, silage fermenting silos as well. You'll see these popular around the map, uh, but a very, very handy way of making your silage, very efficient way of making your silage. You've got your milking pile here as well. You can see the tank through the window there, and we've got uh, the slurry point over here. And again, I pop these uh, barbed wire gates, just one click like that, and hitches them and hitches them back up. Again, we head into this custom pasture where you put your animal feed in here. Um, but look at that. Really embedded into the map. Really feels like part of the map. Not uh, not plonked in as an afterthought. So really nicely done. Uh, you know, even little touches like the, the fan spinning in the uh, cattle yard there. We the people. Let's uh, pop the gate there. And there you go. You can see inside. You can see the parlour. Very nice, there's your water trough as well. Okay, let's pull into here. Now I will say this is probably, I would say, the second biggest farm on the map. A um, little bit more uh, commercial in its nature. Um, so you've got greenhouses there, loads of storage space and barns. There's chickens there as well. Garages there. Uh, workshop through there. Um, all your seed and fertilizer storage points three small bins not sure if you'd want to consider uh, expanding on those if you bought a bigger farm but they they'll do to get you started and obviously silage clamps as well but very open plan uh, organized farm layout there very nice indeed i do believe that's uh, pigs on the end there as well so you've got options for other animals as well and again just panning around the map I mean, look how beautiful it is just feels really really polished which is great and there we go the european guy forget which side of the road to drive on right let's head back to the junction and uh, head up to the start farm which has got a few little nice touches to it so here we are we are coming up to the turn as you can see on the map there it's highlighted in red that road as i mentioned earlier on we jump back to the map for a second there is a key for these roads so a private dirt road runs up to this farm and uh, it's quite a way off the beaten track which is great as well so let's run up here and show you what's up here again this is a really lovely opportunity to just drive through this uh, really well landscape map so much character to it and this goes on and on for just quite a while actually uh, and I'll show you after we've been to the farm how much further up it goes as well. 
Here is our turning, this little crossroads here. So I believe in New Farmer Road you get this field on our right to start with as well. But then we pull into this little space here. You've got this lovely little farm. Little farmhouse there. The doghouse, which is your sleep point. Um, quite a nice silo setup. A few bits and pieces of equipment, nothing special. Uh, just enough to get you started. And you've got some chickens over there as well. Another storage shed over there. I believe that's your, your animal shed, actually. Yes, so you can actually have cows up here as well. There's your, there's your nice pen set into the hillside. And your slurry point there as well. Very nice indeed. Now one of the things that does come with the pack is uh, tired irons, little combines, little John Deere combines. Um, really nice it's included them because they are kind of very much in keeping with the map uh, and appropriate I think for the, for the start of the story. Uh, and there are your chickens as well. But we don't finish just there. If we head a little bit further down the path, we've got a little secret down here and refers to his little intro paragraph as well, um, where he says, I've already planted a crop in your fields for you to really shine. And what have we got down here? We've got ourselves a moonshine still. So there you go, a lovely little hut here, nice detailing around it. Uh, and if we pop the door, we head into here. There you go. We're making ourselves our own uh, unofficial whiskey, shall we call it. So there we go. If we jump into the uh, uh, production menu here, you've got two options, corn whiskey and standard whiskey. And what you need for those, your corn whiskey, cracked corn, which we'll look at in a little while, or rolled barley for your standard whiskey. So um, you should be able to make a little bit of money out of that, which would be quite good. So, some lovely detailing in here, really, really nicely finished. And actually, Nitro Dad gives a big shout out to uh, Jason Shepard, the, his blender guru and the artist responsible for bringing life, beauty, and depth to the custom animal barns, still farmhouse, and three bay garage. So, big shout out to him for uh, his excellent work helping Nitro Dad out with the map. Fantastic stuff. Right, let's head back out of here, and I want to show you a little bit further up into the hills. If I go up here again, we are here at the farm, but look, the trail goes all the way up here. So we're going to do that and all the way out here as well. So some logging tracks as well. So we'll have a quick look at those. So we're back on the dirt track here, heading up past our cornfield, our starter farm cornfield. We'll keep going more fields up here. Relatively small fields again, like I said before, this is definitely lends itself to medium sized equipment. Uh, certainly in this part of the map, but this just runs on and on and we've got more fields here As usual with the PDA on a 4x map it sometimes Lulls you into a false sense of security that things are nearby, but actually they're quite a drive away But then even after that we can continue to run up here The road gets a little bit more bumpy and rickety, but At the top here you break out into a couple of lovely grass meadows. So again, if you want to do some silage work, there's some lovely open pastures here for you to uh, get some grass cut right up in the middle of the hills. So look at that bowl there. Fantastic. Anyway, we're spending far too much time up here. Let's head into town and have a look at a few more things. Go so back down the dirt road and let's roll out back across the river here and just on our right this is the uh, gas station and there's a cell point in there as well and in here Dunkin Donuts Burger King some classic classic references classic Nitro Dad uh, stuff always nice to see the big brands in there and then in here this is our point where we can buy all of our goodies for the farm. Let's just roll into here. The dealership is just over there as well. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. Roll into here. There you go. Anhydrous there. You've got cell points here as well. Let's roll round. Some, the signage is actually very good. I just missed it there, but let's just roll back here. 
So uh, there's your line purchase there, uh, anhydrous. But if we keep going around here, fertilizer. And I do want to show you this, it's important because it is now part of the modded way of making sugar. Uh, here's a cell point, but yes, part of the modded way of making sugar now is that you need lime water as part of the production. So now you can purchase your lime water here. And actually, NitroDad has added this tanker um, into the mix. So when you get the map, if you unzip it, this is included in the file along with the tired iron modding combines. So uh, this now has been modded to take lime water as well, which can be used in that sugar production. Right, with that done, let's quickly nip along here and have a look at the dealership. You get an idea of where that is. Uh, nicely central on the map, actually, so depending on where you are. If you haven't got store deliveries, um, it's pretty well placed for driving anywhere on the map. But again, well thought through. Lots of uh, vehicles lying around in the yard, making it feel lived in. You've got a nice John Deere there, or two in the showroom. There we go. Let's just jump out and have a look inside. It's too nice to not have a look inside, right? There we go. All the spares on the shelves, should you need them. There you go. Couple of Bobcats there. Couple of John Deere's. Very helpful man there, who could help you with all this stuff. Really nicely done. Look at that. Great stuff. Oh look, the case is broken down again. Right, onwards and upwards. Let's open the big roller doors here. And head out. And head into town. Right, here we are, heading back to town. As you can see, the height of the hills behind uh, the town here is really... Really nice. The landscaping that's been put into this, the time and effort put into the landscaping has been fantastic. So uh, let's just run along here. Again, car park there for the walking trail, I believe that is. That sends you off up into the hills. Yeah, up there. And there's a campground up there, which we're going to see later. Um, again, just feels like it's been seriously well thought through. Um, slightly bigger fields here, as you can see, as you get into the kind of flat lands of the of the valley, rather than up into the hills. But great crossing the river here. I mean, there is a multitude of cell points here, um, and buy points and production points. Uh, we'll not go through them all, uh, but we will detail some of the ones that are different from base game. Uh, but I'll also just drive around here and let you see just how well this has been uh, landscaped and made so good again crossing back over the river here run behind here and as you can see cell points galore everywhere you look and buy points there you go there's where your sugar beets get dropped off your sugar production so that's where you'll bring your lime water as well when you want to create that um, let's just jump into the menus. So again, something that Nitro Dad I think does really, really well is put cell points all over that. So you've got so much choice as to where you want to get rid of your stuff. And I think that's that's really helpful. It gives people that flexibility. So as well as all your base game stuff we come down to about here, uh, then you kick into your new production. So pulp there, I'll come back to that in just a little minute because it's part of the sugar making process now. So if you sell your sugar beets or your whatever to the production point for making sugar, pulp is now an output uh, or a waste product from that. But it can be made into uh, pig food. So again, using those byproducts nicely as well. There's the lime water that we talked about that we need to use as part of that production. And then your uh, your you've expanded your bakery selection here. You've got donuts, bagels hot dog buns, Adirondack soda as well, named after the trail that we talked about at the start, wine, corn syrup, potato chips, french fries, dog houses, as we talked about before, um, corn whiskey, which is um, your slightly illicit whiskey from your little still up in the mountains, and then you've got obviously whiskey, beer, and hydrous propane, and sand. 
So again, we'll just run up here. Some of these custom build uh, production points as well. And we'll just roll into some of these nice side streets where the houses are. Which are really nicely done. Look at this. I mean, how, how much character has this got? It's fantastic. So good. And we'll pull in here. There's your propane purchase point as well. If you need that for your corn dryers. And along here. And we'll keep going. The dead end here, because we'll pull in here because the really nice baseball ground. It's not the not the base game one from uh, from the base game maps. It's a custom one, and actually where you sell your hot dog buns and things like that. So again, even even appropriate sell points for the appropriate productions that you do. Very nice. Now I do want to drive around here a little bit more before we head off because um, Nitro Dad has actually left some empty spaces on the map. Uh, or within the town where you can place your own productions as well so you can expand um, some of them need to be cleared as well I'm trying to find one now some of them need to be cleared so there's a cost attached to them there as well but it's a really nice idea that you can expand and build on the farm a little bit more so again as we drive around here here is the dairy and there is the distillery for the whiskey Nice to see. Another gas station there as well. we'll. Keep going along here. Again, we pull into here. You've got your laundromat here. You've got a little bit of a dealership there. Post office. Boom tools. A few restaurants and things here as well. Great to see. Now as we roll around here, a little bit more of a suburban area, more houses. Still the odd, uh, the odd bar and grill there. But there we go. Look, there's one of your um, potential areas that uh, you could purchase, should you choose to. But again, you can see it there as a selected, selectable, purchasable point. Let's roll around here. Again, another lovely field there. Look at that. Nice little contoured field there on the edge of the town. We will head up to the top of the town. I'll quickly pop the uh, the minimap open again just to show you. Uh, again, the key is really nice that uh, Nitro has put together. So you've got all of your facilities highlighted here. So cereal factory, oil factory, brewery, spinnery, dairy, bakery, sugar factory, French fry factory, the mall cell point, the soda factory, clothing factory, dealership, Sawmill, which is way over here, uh, and the animal dealer all the way down here as well, uh, and the campground, which we haven't looked at yet, but uh, really nice to uh, see all of those things. Now, just before we leave here as well, I want to show you um, particularly the grain cell point, because we talked about rolled barley and cracked corn, so I want to uh, show you how that is done. Uh, and it's, it's very nicely done, actually. It's a pretty, pretty clever way of doing things. So, here is our grain point. So there you go, customer pickup for mineral feed. But what we need to do is drive into here. There are four different options you've got when you arrive at here with your crops, depending on what they are. So let's just pull in here. And there are signposts around the other side, so I'm going to roll under here. And as you can see, again, very well signposted. There's your grain sell point and your grain buy point. You've got your flour production there, so you drop off in a different bay for flour production. And then if you come around here, you've got a couple of other options. And there is cracked corn production. So again, you would drop your uh, corn in there and it would make you cracked corn as an output. And over here is your rolled barley production. So drop your crops off in there, get the irrelevant things you want, particularly if you're making moonshine, and then you can head back and uh, start creating. So there you go. Now, if we head out of here, we are right at the top of the town now. So if we head out of here and then hang a left just along here, 
we will head up to one of the other farms. Farm number five, I believe. And again, just these lovely winding roads. The detail's fantastic. It really is. Look at that little kink in the road there. Just really nicely thought through. And here we are in a little, little, little village here. Little chicken coop over there, as you can see. Farmhouse. There's your cow barns there. In another bigger, more commercial farm than maybe you had at uh, the first farm. But all the relevant things. Grain bins, storage. Silo there for your uh, silage. Um, another pen in here. Let's just have a look. One of the base game ones, this. Don't let me open it because I haven't purchased the land. There we go. Land purchased. So it's not, it's not. It's a huge, huge shed. Garage. Storage. Very nice indeed. Very nice. Beautiful. Another fantastic farm. And again, look at the hills in the background. I mean, how good does that look? How realistic does that look? Fantastic. Both sides. Right, we'll just loop around the top here. And then we'll head back down the other side. As you can see there, we've got pigs up in the distance there. With a custom pasture as well. And all these little lanes that disappear off. So access to the fields is really nicely done. You don't struggle to get to any of the fields. We're heading back towards the town now, but we're going to hang a right here. We'll just quickly show you the BGA. And another grain cell point. Like I said, all the options you've got available to you make this very flexible, very flexible map. Probably makes you feel like you're not rinsing and repeating too much over the main river as well. I have to say, the AI traffic seems to be behaving very well as well. As long as I get out of its way. So there we go. Grain cell point. Big grain cell point there. And just beyond that we've got... A rather large BGA. Now there we are, right at the top of the map. What we're going to do is head down here, uh, loop around here, have a look at farm number three here, and then quickly over to farm number four, and that should cover off all the farms. So here we are, running down here. Let me just pull up the bigger map to uh, let you get your bearings as to where we've come from. But as you can see now, we're rolling around the side of fields 51, 52, and 55. And... Uh, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous scenery, isn't it? Look at this. Absolutely just tremendous stuff. Uh, and then it kind of goes into a little bit more of a, a wooded area or area with trees here. So again, the, the landscape changes all the time before opening back up into some more big fields. And like I said, these fields are sli slightly bigger here. So you can see you've got that opportunity on this map to start small and build up. A real, it's a real challenge map, actually. I think it's got the potential to, you know, Almost a start from scratch or a start from uh, nothing or start from small beginnings and then build up to it. There we go. A bit of a ravine there as we come up across farm number three. And again, just look at the the changes in height and elevation. It's not a flat farm in the middle of nowhere. It's really built into the, into the hillside. So again, over there, that looks like our pigs will roll up here. A silage clamp there, we've got our chickens, we've got our cows, everything that you've seen on the other farms again, fermenting silos, a bigger, bigger grain silo there as well. So I would say somewhere in the middle of a medium sized farm. Nice little calf pens there as well. I think we've seen them on some of the other on the other farms as well. So we'll just roll around here. But again, those custom uh, cow pens, fantastic, really nicely done. And again, if you look back to here, those options again for these fields that fan out from farm number three all the way down to here. In fact, what we'll do, we'll jump out and we'll just do a little flight over these before heading back to the truck. There we go. We've flown up high from where the truck is. Now, if we pan around here, you can see there's the 
as the fields as they fan out and if I go a little bit higher here got more fields over here behind you and again right over there in the distance you're looking at this bunch of fields over here uh, but again if we fly up here we've got another nice animal enclosure there for sheep but we keep going up here the path keeps going and opens up to more fields up at the top here so look how far you're going with these fields so much scope here uh, and variety this is a this is really really powerful contender for a brilliant multiplayer map uh, with multiple farms either working together or uh, trying to beat each other to uh, make the most money but uh, brilliant look at that and the roads and the rivers and then you cut back across and just look at that how fantastic is that Anyway, we need to get back in the truck and we need to show you farm number four. Okay, so again, just to give you your bearings, we are running around the edge of the town now. So there is some of the buildings in town. We are just here. Um, and actually, we're coming up across another private road here, which takes us up to the large, largest farm on the map, I think. And that is farm number four. So you pull onto here. This is, as you can see by the mini-map in the corner there, this is a private road. Um, and it goes on for just a little while, but it's a worthwhile drive. So um, again, I've talked about the level of quality of the detail of the landscaping, but look at this. Brilliantly done. All those leaf springs are uh, making us bounce around a bit. But as you run up here, really is a scenic route up to the farm and there's something quite different about this farm which I really like and I'm very tempted to give a go to although it's quite daunting when you see um, how big the fields are but uh, definitely worth a go so here we go you know, rolling up to in essence a vineyard um, so there we go red barn welcome daily tours and tastings and when you see tastings, you know that this is actually, as well as an arable farm with lots of fields over there, it's got some very, very large vineyards. Look at those. Now, thank goodness, all I can say is thank goodness Corseplay can handle a great harvest now. But look at that. It's beautifully done. Look at those vines. Perfectly straight, perfectly spaced. Um, that is a challenge for anybody, but uh, could be quite a fun one, couldn't it? So we'll head up here, and like I said, this is probably the biggest farm on the map. Um, bigger fields as well, so you could probably get away with slightly bigger machinery up here. So there really is something for everyone on this map. Um, but again, beautifully modelled, the lovely fences around the fields, and they look like they're far enough away that they won't encroach or interfere with course play too much if you set your courses up well. Uh, and there we go. Run up to here, some... Lovely big sheds, storage, really nicely laid out farm. Um, everything that we've seen before, so they're fully fully functional with all of these storage points for your fertilizers and stuff. Uh, and there's your pigs, as per the other farms. Around the back of the grain bins here. We'll pop out of the gate here. There's your diesel. More sheds, more storage. And then if we roll around here, this is the nice commercial aspect of it. And there you go. There's another uh, animal pen there for sheep. And we'll roll around here. But what they've got here is almost this... this like it's, the, it's a very commercial farm, this. Um, so obviously this is where they'll have their wine tasting and guests. And I'm guessing there's a bit of a restaurant and... All of that stuff in there, so really nice to see that kind of commercial aspect of farming as well. Moving with the times. There we go. Rather nice field for up in the hills on its own private road. So very, very different, if you imagine, to uh, the little farm, farm one that we started off with. Um, so like I said, you can jump straight into this, throw £10 million in with uh, Easy Dev and uh, go big straight away or you can go the other route and uh, start really small and build up to it there we go down the back of the vineyards now 
really nicely laid out as well. There is a challenge in that. Imagine how many grapes you get out of that. Ooh, I think there might be a there might be a live stream challenge there somewhere. Anyway, let's head back now. We're going to head back into town and show you just a couple of other things. There are some very nice little touches that Nitro Dad has put onto this map, so I want to make sure you see some of them. So here's a really, really clever touch. When it rains, the fields flood. The fields at the bottom of the basin flood. So as you can see around here, um, it has expanded and covered these fields. Now, if you own these fields, you've got to take that chance and take that risk that the crops won't be damaged. But look at that. How great is that? Now, we have turned the uh, rain on so you can see this. But uh, again, another level of just authenticity and, and realism that I really, really like. Fantastically well done. Superb stuff. And very, very cleverly done. Brilliant. Now, there is one last little bit that I thought we'd go and have a look at before we finish, and that is the campground. Because he didn't stop at the stop sign. Did you see that? Outrageous. Um, because Nitro Dad left another little note in the uh, in the map instructions, and it says a campground that I don't recommend you visit after dark. So what on earth could be up there? So let's park up and have a wander up and just see what it's like. There's an instruction if ever I've had one. So here we are, we're on the hiking trail up past the cliffs here. I think it takes us up to the top there and we can use that as a lookout point. And look, there's even people walking the trail. Which is nice to see. Hello, sir. No, nope, he's not for chatting. Oh well. And again, this does go on for quite a while. We're coming across somebody else now. Seems to be in a little faster pace than the other person. Hello, madam. I'm guessing when we get to the top here, we will appear out on the campsite. So here we go. We are right at the top now, and it says there is a brilliant uh, vista lookout point over here for you to take a look at. There we go, another walker up in the hills. Everybody looks so purposeful while they walk, don't they? But look at this. How fantastic is that? What a great view of the whole map. All the way around to there. Fantastic stuff. I am blown away with this, by the way. I am properly impressed. Then if we head the other way, we come across the campsite. Now I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to be here after dark. It looks very welcoming. Very homely. Look, the fire's burning. Look at the quality, though, and the finish on this. Fantastic. Totally, totally brilliant. So well finished. I think you've even got a bath in your tent. Look at that. But why would you not want to be here after dark? Got a nice uh, lake here for water sports and swimming, and this is great. Can't possibly see what will go wrong after dark. Well, there you go. We have taken the plunge. We are here at night. And I'm not seeing any problems at all. So we will leave you at this juncture. Uh, but if you haven't already checked this map, I know it's been out for about a week now. If you haven't checked out this map yet, I strongly advise you do. There is so much to do on it and so much variety on it. It's a, it's a really, really nicely put together map. Again, we know the quality of Nitro Dad's maps and he has excelled himself once again with this. So for now, for me, a rather nervous farm sim guy. Thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye for now.